what's going on, y'all? Promised I'll be right back. And uh, definitely like to be a man of my word. But anyway, I mean, I told you guys last time on the last video that I left off on uh, Daily Jewel number 75 was going to be questioning everything. Uh, and of course, like I said, if you're trying to check it out, uh, for those who want to actually read it and get an in-depth uh, look at it, you know you can hit the site. Um, and also, if you want to check it out, if you don't want to go to the site, I also leave it in the bottom of the uh, the the, uh, the description of every video. But anyway, like I said, Daily Jew number seventy-five was going to be questioning everything. Um, sounds simple, but this happens to be one of the things we do the least. Uh, hence is why I have the light bulb on my face. Um, I'll get into that one at a later date. But um, I notice more and more every day we're uh, we're confined to a generation that really questions nothing. Anything we're given, we just run with. We take everything for face value. We don't ask why. We don't ask when. We don't ask how. Uh, whether it be political issues, the reasons for the wars, the celebrities, uh, anything, we just take it for what it is. If uh, if uh, if Obama tells us. He's blowing up Korea for this specific issue. We're just running with it, and we'll argue to the death. Uh, we'll argue to the death with the next individual about it. Have no knowledge of it. Have no understanding. We're just running with somebody told us because we've been trained to believe that we lead. I'm sorry, not lead. We follow select individuals because of their credentials. Uh, one of the biggest things I found, even when I jumped into the business world, because I come from a blue collar family is 99% of them did not believe anything I said when I told them my plans and the things that I felt like I could uh, I could accomplish on an entrepreneurial level. And it took me years to understand, but our generation, I'm 25 years old, our generation is the generation, uh, really just to sum it up, we're crazy, we're go-getters. Uh, it's unfortunate, but our mothers are getting younger and our killers are getting younger. They're coming out of middle school these days. Which only tells me one thing, we lack a conscience. So we don't really, we don't rationalize a lot. We, this this generation, not me per se, but the generation moves off impulse. We just react, we're very irrational. The ones before us, the ones that are in the age bracket of 40 and 50 and up, they don't really understand us. They will train, especially people of color, I know from my uh, my personal experience, we were trying to accept what we were given because we came from a generation that was just getting uh, we were just getting our foot in the door as a race. So when we that not us, but that generation was trained to believe, you know, if they give you a house, they give you a good job, they give you fifteen dollars, you better just take it and run with it because that's the best we can do. You better be happy and make do. Our generation, I know at least especially from my point of view, I don't believe in that mentality whatsoever. And that just goes back to questioning everything. When your parents tell you or the grandparents or the aunt or uncle or even people our age that have been, I'm going to say, brainwashed by that mentality and that generation of people just try to push things on you. Don't forget to question everything. Ask them why do they do this. I know a lot of women right now, if they were to separate from their other half, automatically believe that a child should go with that parent, that, that, that female parent. But I'm just a firm believer in Whatever situation works the best, whichever parent is better fit or whichever works out for it as a cohesive unit is where the child should go. And I myself, I'm a prime example of that because I've raised my children full time. But uh, again, I mean, that's just one front. You got people who won't go to church any day of the year, but they're going to go on Easter and dress up. Ask them why. Most won't know why. They've just been trained and conditioned to believe that, you know, if you don't miss any day, if you're gonna miss any day, don't let it be Easter because grandma said don't do that. And uh, like I said, I mean, even from celebrities and and athletes and everybody, a lot of these people stand for nothing. They're put in positions of power because they may have athletic abilities. They may be politically correct. They may know someone in the right places. But question these people. Half of these people we follow and idolize have no substance whatsoever. Coming from a uh, African American perspective, I can never understand how my people will fight, kill, and die for a hood they'll never own. Not only is it the hood because it's in uh, it's slum like, it's impoverished, but we've been conditioned to believe 
and champion these areas as if it's a good place to be. The hood is not, that's, it's nothing good about that. And most of these guys that you see repping the hood and dying for the hood, they own nothing there. They're living in their, they're living pretty much in their grandmother's home or their mother's home. And most likely she's behind on her bill. She can't even keep the house up herself. But these same individuals will run out in the street and fight like cats and dogs to hold down the hood. So again, that's another thing. You, when, when you're in those situations and you're around those type of people, just never hesitate to question and ask them why. Why the hell do you do what you do? Why are you willing to die for a neighborhood but your child attends an F school? I've never seen these same guys go fight for their education. I've never seen these same guys at these at these county buildings fighting, asking why are you cutting uh why are you cutting education costs? But they'll fight for a hood. They'll fight for a color. They'll fight for the most minuscule things, but the things that matter, they'll never fight for. And again, that goes back to question everything. When you see these individuals, when you're around these individuals, just ask them why. Nine times out of ten, they have absolutely no answer for you. They're pure followers. Someone they were once cool with or someone they grew up with have taught and conditioned them that, you know, th this is our neighborhood. These are our stumping grounds. And this is where we belong and we'll fight for it. You're a fool. Because if the city came in there with, with that green paper, I mean, I don't know where this city from city, but I know in Tampa, Florida, if they come with that green paper and tell you it's time to go, you got three days, you're out of there. That's not your hood. That's not your house. That's not your foundation. Um, I mean, it even more so, like I said, with the celebrities. We live in a society where people will exploit people with disabilities for likes, for shows. Or you got children who are seven to eight years old wearing 100, 120 pounds and people will exploit these individuals. But these are the people we champion. Even from the, uh, to the rappers, to the entertainers, a lot of these guys stand for absolutely nothing. They're gonna tell you, you know, you know hold down your hood, hustle, do this for the block. You know, uh, I'm sure you guys listen to rap, you know, rappers. We, we, we're living in a world of social media. You see these guys all the time. I'm gonna tell you one thing. They're not going to write you they're not going to feed your children. They're not even going to make you a hashtag. You are a small speck, small dot, in a range of numbers that they attack with that nonsense that they try to sell to you. And again, it goes back to question everything. You gotta ask your favorite rappers. Why are you still telling me about selling keys and you live in a mansion? You have nothing to do with keys. So why would you why would you give me a message that perpetuates uh, prison time and violence and things of that nature? Why would you tell me or try to influence me to go do something that would take me away from my children? And you're not gonna write me. When I write you from the pen, you're not gonna respond. You're, I'm nobody to you. But again, like I said, just go back to question everything. You gotta ask, you gotta ask yourself when you're listening to your favorite rapper and he's talking about busting down the block and the guns and this and that, why? First of all, why are you telling me that? Second of all, why are you lying to me? You are a paid entertainer. I know you're not in the hood busting down blocks on the regular. And I'm gonna just tell you from personal experience, you cannot fit a gun in skinny jeans. It, it doesn't work unless you're working, unless you have a two-shooter Dillinger. But I know myself, I'm a Glock man myself. You cannot fit a Glock with a 30 round extended clip in skinny jeans. It, it, it won't work. An AK-47, a Mac-11. These weapons don't fit in skinny jeans. They don't fit in fitted jeans. So again, when you're uh, when you're emulating these people, because we are creatures of habit, we tend to emulate the things we see, hear, and are surrounded with. You got to question yourself and ask yourself, what are you doing? Is that really somebody you want to emulate? Why is that guy saying that when he's $100 million up in Forbes? Why is he telling me that? Why should I listen to him? And like I said, this goes with everything from school to politics to rappers to family. Ask your teachers why. Why are you teaching me how to fit in and not how to get my own? Why are you teaching me how to how to work my way up and not how to do my taxes? Why are you conditioning us and training us to depend, to get out here as adults and depend on other people? Just ask them why. And I'm gonna tell you now, you're gonna run into a lot of resistance, especially with family. A lot of people are gonna take this personal because they won't understand you. I've been there and I'm still there. I have older relatives that understand nothing about me. 
They don't understand free will. They don't understand independence. They don't understand why I would tattoo my face. I can't tattoo my face because I put myself in a position where I don't have to walk a fine line to please anybody. I just please myself. I do what I do for happiness. Not because I need a check. I don't have to rely on a stranger to give me money to feed my children because I put myself in a position where I don't need that. That's a whole nother daily jewel we'll get into later. But again, this one is very simple. Just ask them why. Half of these guys you believing in and you listening to, half of these old people that are trying to give you advice or trying to tell you how to run your life, they don't know why. They don't know why they go to church every Sunday. A lot of them don't know. Grandma just told them, you better be in church. If you don't go Wednesday, if you don't do this and you don't do that, you better go to church on Sunday and you better tie 10%. They have no idea why. If you leave your man, why does he? Why does the child need to go with you? Most women are gonna say, because I'm the mom and I'm the dad. That means absolutely nothing. This is a partnership. We created this together. It's like a 50-50 thing. But again, all those are different subjects. I mean, we could go on the subject of why all day. But again, just never take, never not take time to stop and ask yourself why. Why am I doing this? Why do I hang with that person? Why do I listen to, to why do I listen to that person? Why do I feed my mind the things I feed it? Why do you not want me to be what I want to be, but rather want me to be what you want me to be? Why do I need a job? Why do we need to grow up and rely on other grown-ups? to help us feed our little people until they become grown-ups. It may seem simple, but that is one of the biggest questions of life is just why? Why do you do what you do? And I'm gonna be real with you, the day you figure that out, your life is gonna be a lot more peaceful, it's gonna go by a lot more smoother, and you're gonna have a better understanding of everything around you when you finally ask yourself why? And you're honest with yourself about why? But again, like I said, Daily Jew number seven, um, number seven. Well, yeah, Daily Jew number 75. Let's question everything. Like I said, I'll have it in the site. Uh, I have it in the description. And for anybody that wants to get the uh, the whole physical package of the Daily Jewels, uh, aside from my next autobi autobiography, I'm going to be releasing the Daily Jewels uh, as audio and an ebook uh, mid May. So you guys stay tuned for that as well. But anyway, uh, like I said, anybody want to hit me with comments, I love a healthy debate. I am very big on why, and most of my people, my generation, they're not asking why. We're just going with the flow. Mom and dad told us it's how it goes, and we're just running with it. Find yourself. You're not living for them. You're living for you. When you go in the box, you're going by yourself. So ask yourself why you do the things you do. But anyway, Daily Jew 75, question everything. You guys stay tuned. I'll be throwing another one at you Thursday.